huge tax cuts are proposed for the wealthiest corporations who will no longer even pay a minimum corporate tax while welfare benefits are reduced, jobs are moved overseas, and cutbacks are threatened in every state on public services. I'm talking about that war in which civil liberties are attacked in the name of enhanced security, where no evidence need be presented nor charges filed in order to detain, wiretap, seize the property of, violate the civil rights of anyone who falls under suspicion. Where in my own neighborhood, not only a wire service with a possible indirect connection to terrorism, but also a market and a gift shop that share the same address, all had their property seized, no charges filed, no reason. I'm talking about the war on the workers, and it's a war that we must fight with our hearts and spirits. It's a war in which we must declare what we are for, not just what we are against. And what are we for?
the people that I saw. Last 1999, you are all the people who shut down the WTO. The monopoly capitalists continue and remains the policy of globalization. They continue to create havoc to all the people of the world. The globalization through its policy on privatization, deregulation, and liberalization. These are the policy that kills a lot of Filipinos. Eight million Filipinos were forced to live in the Philippines because of this globalization policy. Three and a half Filipinos are here now in the United States who were also exploited by the host country. We are here today in solidarity to all of you. Yesterday, there were thousands of Filipinos in the Philippines. They were have a three days protest. Starting yesterday, they barricade the U.S. Embassy. globalization against Afghanistan. Last, two years ago, November 1999, there were 250 delegates from different countries who joined to our protest in shutting down the WTO. Solution that this WTO, there is no such thing as free trade, there is no such thing as fair trade under corporate monopoly capitalism, under imperialist corporate corporation. shutting down. People all over the world continue their struggle, exposing the monster, the machinery monster, the APEC, the World Trade Organization, NAPTA. As long as this machinery remains, they will create havoc to us. machinery they will create havoc and create and kill people they will create a new machinery so the only thing that will remain to us is our strength and our determination to continue and fight imperialist globalization
freedom para sa demokrasya ang tao ang bayan ngayon ay lumalaban the people united will never be defeated struggle thank you very much I've talked to several people in the crowd and they say why are you going to talk about fast track I thought that vote already happened I've only called about a hundred times well what's going on in Washington D.C is that the Republicans, the Bush administration, and the corporate interests in Washington, D.C. have just taken $40 billion from us. They've taken our civil liberties from us, and they are poised to take our democracy from us by passing fast track. In the last 44 days, we've been told every single week that the vote in Congress and the House of Representatives is going to be next week. That week comes and they don't have the votes. And they don't have the votes because all of you have been calling the Washington delegation, telling them no fast track. The results have been Jim McDermott right here in the 7th Congressional District opposes fast track. Rick Larson, Rick Larson up in Bellingham opposes fast track. share a few reflections. Driving over here, I was thinking about how it felt for the past two years when we weren't doing this every day, compared to that one week when we were doing this every day, and how much a part of my heart has lived in that week following November 30th, and what that felt like. And um, also, how hard it is to remember that feeling, except at moments like this when we come together. Most of the time when we're not coming together, it's very hard to remember what it feels like to have power as a people together, working together, acting together, thinking together. Has anyone else had that problem? Some people say no, and I wish I were in your shoes. Um, I wanted to ask you all, right now it's, this is celebration, in the moments of celebration let's not forget how hard it is and how quick it, 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 how easy it is to feel isolated the rest of the year, the rest of the time. 
How many people, who was, who was here last year on November 30th getting arrested? So, for me, that was both an empowering and an incredibly discouraging experience. Because it was so stupid. It was so incredibly ridiculous. It wasn't the WTO to get arrested for that time. It was just something silly. The right to free speech. The right to assemble. And right now, we are losing track of those rights in this country at this time with this patriotism, with this war, with this administration. Has anyone felt or been afraid of that? Has anyone been afraid of that? It's too easy to get caught in only one picture of the situation. Right now we're celebrating, it's great, we have power. We can just think that's the whole reality. Then tomorrow, when we're alone, we can think that's the whole reality and we're isolated. Or whenever the next time is that you're alone. And I want to say that we need to be thinking more complexly than that. We need to be remembering both things all the time. When we say the WTO is bad, we need to remember that there are more fights than the WTO. We need to remember that the enemies that we're opposed to don't all agree with each other. They also have bad days. So I want to encourage you, if you don't mind, I want to encourage you in black. Thanks for the drums. It's just really loud. I want to encourage you to think about after we, after the WTO is defeated, after the questions that we raise are talked about by everyone, after everyone thinks this is important, then what? Because the world after that isn't going to be much simpler. And the world we want to create isn't going to be less complicated than the one there is now. It's still going to be a hard, complex world. One thing in the two years of protests that I've been involved in is I have not heard enough people thinking about what the world is going to look like if we win and fix the problems that we think we can fix. And we have to do that. Because if we don't do that, everyone thinks that we're just here for a party. And we are, I think, also here for a party. As I said, I'm here because I want to capture that feeling. But we got to look beyond that. That means we have to talk about it. We have to think about it. We have to read about it. It's not enough to put out a slogan. It's not enough to put on a mask. It's not enough. So what are you going to do next? It's not enough just to say, a war, this war is a crime against humanity. Every war is against humanity. How can there be a war that isn't against humanity? But let's remember the complexity. The terrorist actions are also crimes against humanity. Yes, everyone agrees with that. So how do you hold both those truths in one mind? So I want to ask you to start thinking complexly. Think that it's not so simple all the time. Terrorists commit crimes against humanity when they do a suicide bombing. And then when, when then we bomb a Red Cross hospital, that's also a crime. Yeah. One of the ways that people try to hold on to complex truths, for me personally, I'll tell you, is to try to come at it from a, a religious or a faith perspective. That doesn't work for everyone. Not everyone is into that. But there's something about the meaning, the nature of hoping for a better world and trying to live in this one at the same time. If you really do it, not just with your brain, not just with your ideology, not just with your slogans, if you really do it, if it touches your heart, then you start being able to see the different sides. Your heart has four chambers. There's more than one side. I really want to ask you, from here on, let's continue to work for the defeat of the WTO, but let's, can, yes, let's also start talking about what kind of world we're creating, and let's start doing it in our lives, 
in Seattle, in our groups, in our organizations, in the way we interact with each other. We all remember that after the WCO, we had sort of the long, sad experience of the attempt to create a coalition that lasted after the WCO. Yes? A lot of you remember that. Hard meetings, people fighting, not being able to listen to each other, and not being able to find a common enough purpose. The Kaiser action was not our, not our fault. That also made a big dent in us. In us. It made a dent in my heart, I think. I think it made a dent in other people's hearts. So let's fix that, let's move on, and let's win all the battles that we're fighting. Thank you, and I want to wish you all blessings and strength in all the work that you're doing to fix and heal the world everywhere.